She really wants a moment where she can interrupt Donald Trump and say, I'm speaking. Because, you know, Ka 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 Kamala Harris, sometimes I think she, she, do she doesn't want to be the vice president. She wants to be the vice principal. She really likes... She really likes to just tell people what to do, and she really wants that moment where she says, I'm speaking, right? She wants to tell people what to do, Hogan, because she can't tell us what her policies are. She can't tell us what she wants to do for us, for the everyday American, when she comes into office. What do you make of that? Yeah, and if you walk, go back and watch that kind of montage of her saying, I'm speaking during that debate, it's so nauseating, it's so <laughs> annoying. Um, it's so obviously contrived, and a little head nod when she does it, too. Uh, look, she, she's not very likable. Uh, she's way more radical than uh, Joe Biden is. She's way less likable than Joe Biden is. Moments like that really solidify that in people's brains. And remember, she ran for president before, and she lasted about six, seven weeks of a pretty decent campaign. She went on the debate stage and had some really canned, contrived lines, ready to go to attack Joe Biden, call him a racist and a rapist mm -hmm. on a debate stage. So she's not afraid of, of throwing punches out there. So I expect her to kind of be well rehearsed, come up with a few stories and some answers there that, that true or not, uh, will land a punch because she wants to, as Mark said, create that viral moment that she can utilize later uh, to, to sell T-shirts, and to try and build a, mo uh, a movement off of, I just don't know that it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, that's right. She sold T-shirts after the debate when she called Joe Biden a racist. I remember that. Yep. Uh, good mm -hmm. point, Hogan. Mar Mark Halpern, we had him on the last half hour, and we were talking about this, and he said, yeah, she could probably have a good debate. Uh, yep. You know, she's got the best mm -hmm. team, Mark, um, that, you know, is prepping her, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of, I think, Republicans are, oh, she's not going to do well. She doesn't have a teleprompter. She doesn't have her notes. But it's very possible that she could, if, you know, she's trained properly, have a good debate. And the bar is set so low. It's kind of like the Joe Biden debate, that if he's able to stand, he did a good job. <laughs> Well, I think that the key on watching the debate and deciding who wins, who loses, it's kind of like a NASCAR race. Are you watching the actual race or are you watching for the wrecks? Because if you're watching just to see her punch and Donald Trump punch back, well, then, you know, that's what you're going to get. If you're actually looking for answers on lowering gas and grocery prices, securing the border, what you're actually going to do if this one of these two people is in the White House well, Donald Trump's going to win that hands down. Mm. If you're just watching for the crashes, that's an entirely different story. And it could be, you know, it could be a, a draw. Mm. Great analogy, Mark. Mm. I love it. Hogan, <laughs> what does the former president need to do to essentially come out of this debate a winner? Oh, it, it's resonate uh, with the American people on the issues that matter to them most by talking about how he was able to do the things they wanted him to do to make their lives better. I mean, he's an accomplished president. These two records side by side uh, aren't even close to each other. And if people were really voting on that as opposed to uh, vibes or joy, uh, you know, Donald Trump would be up 40 points in this thing. It'd be a landslide because mm -hmm. the American people remember just a short time ago, they could afford food. They could afford uh, gasoline. They could afford, um, you know, going on trips for heaven's sakes. They could go out to dinner every once in a while. They had a secure southern border. There weren't wars breaking out all over the world. That That's the difference here. And so if he can focus on that and just remind people that everything Kamala Harris also is saying she wants to do is in the future tense. I will do this. I promise you I'll do this. On day one, I will do this. She's been vice president now for four years and has done none of these things. Doing those two things, I think, will really help his cause. Yeah, that, that's a good point. Uh, Mark, mm -hmm. the path to 270 will come down to Battleground, Pennsylvania. And according to the latest polling, Trump and Harris, they're virtually tied in that state right now. Uh, do you think this debate could, you know, make or break a candidate like it did with Joe Biden? I'm not sure if it'll make or break, because I, I think, obviously, early voting starts, well, now in North Carolina. It starts shortly in Pennsylvania. Yeah. And I do think mm -hmm. people are going to look past the sound bites. They're going to look past the social media clips, and they're going to vote on what actually will improve their lives. But there's no question, while Donald Trump has multiple paths to 270, it's going to come down to Pennsylvania, Georgia, and North Carolina. You win those three, you're in the White House. Mm -hmm. All right. Good stuff. Hard to believe. Early voting today in North Carolina. It seems Ugh. a little too early. Yes. For early voting. Like pumpkin spice. Too early. Oh, no. I don't know. Uh, it's September. You can do pumpkin spice. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe October in New York. <laughs> True. <laughs>